Hello there, BookTube. My name is Daniel. Welcome back to my channel, Guilty Feet. I've got no rhythm. Uh, I'm talking to you. It is Sunday afternoon, April 14th. Uh, um, uh, I'm still here, despite the best efforts of my idiot prime minister and some lunatic ayatollahs. Uh, um, and uh, perhaps not in the best mood um, to review a book, which I really didn't enjoy. Uh, um, so you know, I went and had a look um, uh, today after I finished this book yesterday uh, um, to see how this book has been reviewed. And, and I, I wasn't aware of how widely it was reviewed about nine months ago or a year ago when it first came out. Uh, and I picked up over Christmas and read it, as I say, this week um, and you know, really, really found it um, terrible and then saw almost universal acclaim for this book. So it's possible that I'm just not in the best mood for a, uh, a book about um, war and the horrors of war and the glories of war and all that other stuff. Uh, uh, the book I'm talking about is In Memoriam um, by Alice Wynne, which I found um, derivative, manipulative, you know, um, um, ill thought, uh, um, um, silly bollocks. Um, and, uh, you know, I sort of pride myself on curating my reading um, uh, reasonably uh, well so that I, I don't read things I'm going to hate. Um, I picked this up because it was one of the books that I could get half price uh, um, uh, when I was in uh, Waterstones over Christmas. And it was everywhere because it, it won the Waterstones debut fiction prize. And then I think after that went on to win Waterstones Book of the Year. I, and truly, truly awful. Um, uh, um, the the author was a pupil um, at Marlborough College, which is a, a elite private school. Uh, it was a boarding school for many years, and now has a, a boarding a, a boys boarding school, and now um, sort of went co-ed in the nineties. Um, and uh, and the school that she writes about in the book is a fictionalized version of Marlborough College, uh, uh, um, uh, which was established at this, the Marlborough was established in the um, eighteen hundreds, 1860s, 70s, something like that. Um, and I went to a, an elite boys um, private school, which was established about 200 years earlier. Uh, um, and uh, um, I think her experience here has sort of colored uh, her whole view of this this book and not necessarily in a good way. Uh, um, really telling about this, is it's, it's a First World War narrative, um, um, uh, specifically a First World War narrative about two boys in school uh, who are, um, are, you know, are in love with each other and then become lovers um, sort of in the trenches and, and then when they're on a break in a French villa. Um, uh, it is the least sexy, least erotic uh, um, version of sex, either heterosexual or homosexual, I've ever found in print. Um, just lots of, of fumbling and, and uh, um, you know, just dreamily described um, blowjobs and, and then um, sex and apologies for causing pain after. It's just really deeply unerotic. I was quite disappointed to see um, Garth Greenwell had uh, blurred this on the back because uh, um, the book of his that I read had some of the most erotic sex I've ever read of any kind, heterosexual, homosexual, in that case also homosexual sex. Uh, uh, um, I felt the inauthenticity of the of the writing about these two uh, young lovers throughout this book in in, in the ways that they you know when it's um, uh, uh, before they become lovers while they're lovers and afterwards. Um, but it's a First World War narrative, sort of um, just pulling out every story that you've ever heard about the horrors of the trenches and regurgitating them into a novel. This is somebody who, as we all did in school in England. Uh, uh, learn about First World War. We all read uh, Wilfred Owen and Rupert Brooke, and and uh, you know I studied um, the First World War poets and and Siegfried Sassoon for my uh, O level uh, when I was near the end of tenth grade, and and she seems to have followed the exact same path and decided, uh, having been the first person ever to discover this, that she's going to regurgitate it into a novel. Uh, it's it's poorly done. It is uh, um, uh, deeply inauthentic. Uh, uh, just 200 pages too long, uh, um, and that's a 350 page book. I really, I, every single beat was um, um, telegraphed, every single um, um, horrible, horrific action was clearly being copied out of a history book uh, and all smudged together. So, this is all happening at once at the same time, uh, um, uh, all happening to people that the, the two main characters know and went to school with. It's so unlikely, it's so unerotic it's so unreal these are characters 
uh, based on people she's idolized and glorified in 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 life in in her school studies it's so undeveloped uh, uh, unsophisticated a really really um disappointingly trite uh, um novel uh, it not i mean I, there are things I've hated more. I won't say I hated it, but it was just weak and a, and a real struggle to get through. About 50 pages in, my wife looked at me and said, well, why, why didn't you just put it down? Why do you... I said, look, I'll get through this, but it, you know, it really dragged. And I, I read it, the rest of it in one day, uh, um, but just every step, I just thought, I, I can get to the end of this and I'll have something else to read after this. I've read other First World War literature. I've read contemporaneous uh, writings about the First World War. Um, um, Rupert Brooks' poem is is one of my uh, favourite poems. One of the first poems I ever memorised. Uh, the soldier, if I should die, I think only this of me. There's some corner of a foreign field that is for every England natural which earth I shall be. There shall be a richer dust concealed, etc., etc., etc. And then, of course, the the poem after which it should be fairly hard to write anything about the First World War uh, unless it's spectacular, and that's um, um, Dulce Decorum Est, um, where those three words. Uh, uh, calling that uh, that phrase the old lie sort of puts an end to any writing you could ever do about the First World War, unless you're spectacular. And now I'm talking about Pat Barker's trilogy, Magnificent. This is not magnificent. Um, I, I saw a video where the author uh, um, and spoke about the books that had inspired her and mentioned The Secret History. It's a magnificent book. And then um, something else, I don't remember what it was. Uh, uh, it, it, this doesn't come close to any of these. It's just weak, derivative, derivative. I sobbed my way through it because the stories that she's regurgitating are terrible. The things that were done to young men, uh, uh, the callousness of the uh, officers and the the uh, uh, the generals uh, um, towards the officers and the soldiers, the the uh, uh, going over the top. This has all been done. We've seen it. There was nothing new here. Nothing original just trash really uh, um other people loved it don't take my opinion uh, um if you still fancy reading this i just really thought there was nothing nothing here that's in memoriam by alice Wynn. I, I i hate i'm not good at trashing books and i might not have come down this so hard if it hadn't won prizes i hadn't seen so many other people uh, uh, who are much better at this kind of thing than i am uh, i'm saying how much they loved it um so i felt comfortable in that case saying i really didn't but that's just me uh, um take care god bless bye